Thank you, Ashley, and good morning, everyone. I, I won't spend time welcoming the many distinguished guests here. We've heard that we have a really strong lineup here, but I would just like to acknowledge the many students in the room, both university students and from the state schools. I'd also like to acknowledge, as we heard from the Governor, the wonderful welcome to country by Richard Wally. He inspires us every time he performs those welcomes to country for us. Um, let me just start by thanking the Premier, Mark McGowan, and the Governor, Kim Beasley, for their opening presentations, or pictures, as we've just heard. We greatly appreciate you taking the time to be here, and we're delighted that you're willing to engage with us on these issues that impact the city, the nation, and our region, and ones that are very important from our point of view in terms of driving capabilities. It's a pleasure to be here again at the In The Zone conference, and I'd particularly like to acknowledge the work of the Perth US Asia team, led by the director, as you know, Gordon Flake, for their hard work. They've consistently delivered dynamic, high-quality programs that have real-world impact. And they seem to be finding us many glorious venues. The challenge, as we heard from Richard, was where we go next in terms of towards the swan, but I can assure you that this state has no shortage of wonderful vantage points for the city and amazing venues. The University of Western Australia has been hosting this In The Zone conference since 2009, almost a decade ago. And if it helps to contextualise how quickly this time has marched, in 2009, Kevin Rudd was the Prime Minister, Stephen Smith was the Foreign Minister, the boom was still booming, the global financial crisis was wreaking economic havoc across the globe. The first Apple iPhone was barely two years old. This year, in the zone's focus on the zone above is both exciting and timely, we've heard that several times already this morning, with the recent opening of the Australian Space Agency, and we're delighted to have the agency head with us, Dr. Megan Clark, who I have to say is a UWA graduate, and we're always happy to welcome you back, Megan. I'm also just wanting to acknowledge that we have all the universities represented in the room here today. We work extremely collaboratively in many areas, and this is one of those. And I think I want to just acknowledge, as we've heard already, that we're working together with many agencies across this state and nation and internationally to really work on this particular um, themed topic. UWA itself has a rich history in uh, research in astronomy and astrophysics, as well as innovation. We're active in space research across multiple disciplines. The International Centre for Radio Astronomy, fondly known as ICRA, supports Australia's involvement with the Square Kilometre Array. Its data-intensive astronomy team at UWA is faced with the challenge of processing the immense flow of data from the Square Kilometre Array. They've developed data processing software that pushes the boundaries of big data management, capable of performing quadrillions of calculations per second. Meanwhile, our frequency and quantum meteorology research group are world leaders in precision measurement, and we're assisting the European Space Agency's Atomic Clock Ensemble in Space mission. And our galaxy and mass assembly team is using a panchromatic approach to map the different components, such as stars, dust, cold gas, of over 300,000 galaxies in the local universe. Our involvement in the discovery of gravitational waves is well known, and gravitational wave technology is already being applied to mineral exploration, quantum computing, and pollution monitors. We're about uh, to, I'm very excited about the potential for UWA and its participation in future collaborations on space health and medical research. We also have researchers working on better satellite communication, on how to manage problems with moon dust and lunar weather, on drones and satellite remote modelling, space junk and robots, and on the human side of space and its exploration, including space tourism, and I should say, I had the pleasure of sitting next to Enrico Palermo last night at dinner, another UWA graduate, um, and I was tempted to book my slot on the journey and then remembered that I get travel sick in my own car. I thought, probably not. 
The zone above this conference will explore three key themes today. We've heard a bit about them in some of the earlier presentations. Security, Earth observation and space environment. Security in the context of working with the Indo-Pacific nations to ensure the use of the zone above is free, assured and secure. The Governor has already commented on this. Earth observations are critical for scientists, but apart from satellites, what other technologies exist or are about to exist that can provide for us an eye in the sky? And the final theme explores how countries can cooperate to clean up, clean up the space environment so it's free from debris, reducing the risk of collisions. Globally, and in this region of the world in particular, it is our responsibility as leaders researchers and policymakers to use our expertise in a collective cross-disciplinary effort to build a sustainable, resilient and safe space environment. Humanity's involvement in space is not simply a future which we are yet to manifest. We do not have to wait for George Jetson or Jean-Luc Picard to go boldly into the unknown. The matter matters now. It makes a difference, and it has an impact now, up and down our time zone and across the globe. And UWA is committed to advancing the conversation and building upon the themes that will emerge from this event. Let me remind you, as Hermes said, that which is, better, but that which is below corresponds to that which is above, and vice versa, to accomplish the miracles of the one thing, the universal and the particular, what happens on one level of reality happens on every other level.